From sweet treats to savory sideshows, we catch up with some of the highlights at this year's Vancouver International Fringe Festival. The Fringe calls itself theatre for everyone, and with such a wide range of performances to choose from, this festival truly delivers. Wow, <laughs> nice to see you all. <laughs> Here's what you're gonna like about the Fringe. You can see a show for like 10 or 12 bucks, um, and you're gonna see, you know, really bad stuff. You're gonna see really, really good stuff though as well. It's a, it's a real like theater gamble almost, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's totally worth it. So it's just a great experience and it's a great opportunity to see lots of different ideas, lots of different stuff. You know, there's a lot of comedy here too. I think we better be burned alive, or would it be better be frozen alive, or ripped up, or, or put in the eye, and oh my god, it's right, bikes! It's evident the performers really love being part of this one-of-a-kind theatrical experience. so fulfilling just writing your own work and then having people come out and watch it and hopefully laugh that's our goal anyway yeah so there's nothing not a better feeling than when that's going well and you've completely made it all yourself but not everyone loves the festival it does have its critics too well, it is not the most highly educated event, okay, okay, but if you are very experienced, such as myself, okay, okay, you may be able to glean some sort of truth from this nonsense these people present to you on stage, okay, okay, so it has its worth. The Fringe is known for its smaller sized intimate shows, but this year, Smile the Musical is bucking that trend. It's just so great to see how we can bring all these people together to make such a fun production. Uh, it makes us laugh every day that we are they are creating. It's just so so much energy in the whole room and bringing back to us. So it's just so much fun. The production maintained its all youth cast by using puppets in place of adults. Mother, stop making scenes. As we're choosing shows, we're, we were like, we want to not have adults really. We wanted to keep it an even playing ground with, with, with the youth. And so we're like, how are we going to do this? There's not many shows that have just youth. So we uh, were like, but if we had puppets. <laughs> so long, sweetie. Gotta go now. All right, okay? The Fringe is an ideal platform for artists to express their uninhibited creativity. One of the most important reasons it exists, I think, is because it's unjuried, it's uncensored. So you can put up exactly what you want to say, and somebody, more often than not, somebody's going to see it. Maybe it's no good, but it was your chance. It was That's your chance to do it. This is going well so far. <laughs> After the break... Close your eyes for a moment. We take a journey through the subconscious mind. And this was the height of the life of the Japanese community in that area. Taking a stroll through history at the Monogatari exhibit. Local Connection will be right back. We will not do as we are told. We will not dump our friends just because someone says they're not cool. We will not be shy when we have something to say. We will not let boys have all the sports. We will not be afraid to take on challenges. We will not go on diets just to look a certain way. We will not be ashamed of who we are. We are girls. We will do what's right for us. If you just sit, your gut will be blue. If you sit and sit, you'll turn to goo. You gotta balance food and activity. Working together, the body electricity. The moral is you gotta balance the two. With good food and activity, you can make a healthy you. You gotta balance food and activity. Working together, the body electricity. Welcome back to Local Connection. 
Feeling rushed lately? Is the stress of work getting to you? Maybe it's time to set that mind at ease and check your cares at the door. Michael Barry Anderson introduces us to an amazing woman who's all about harmonizing the conscious and the subconscious mind through a unique type of therapy. To me it's like art, it's like I don't look at you and tell you what's wrong with you, I look at you and see what's beautiful in you and then I just chip away at the things that shouldn't be there, so I feel like I'm removing blocks to love. Janice Leslie is a hypnotherapist who uses her intuition and expertise to heal people. I'd like you then, Michael, just to close your eyes for a moment, right? Okay. And just, just close them now and just relax a little bit, right? And there's no, okay. there's no trick to this. In fact, the only thing you really need to do is just listen to everything I say. Through hypnotherapy, everyone can create positive change within themselves. Remember being back in that. The benefits of that is that the ability to get to the initial event very, very quickly within minutes, as opposed to traditionally maybe six months, a year or longer of counseling, talking therapy. So the hypnotherapist has to keen, keep a keen eye on you while you're going through that experience. So if it's something that was very scary, we might withdraw you a little bit, pull you back as if you're watching a TV set so you can still go through it, but be at a safer place, right? So it's again, it's, it's I mean, with the magic of movie making, I mean, isn't this the most fun thing to do? Like you're doing your own movies, right? <laughs> so like, you just need a director. When I do hypnosis with someone, what I do is I always talk slower. I will talk to your subconscious mind as if I'm speaking slowly to a 10-year-old. I see. Because the subconscious mind, most of the stuff that was created there was young, very young. So if I talk slowly, then you're hearing it. I've been practicing hypnotherapy probably over 20 years. I knew I was doing something unusual when I would be one-on-one -on -one with people in, my, in, in the helping profession. And I, the only way I could describe it back then is I felt like I floated into them and I helped them go to where they needed to go. I had a tremendous amount of education anyway, very sort of traditional, and as I changed, I became more open-minded. And the hypnosis helps you develop any more of those natural skills that you already have. So it just really blew the doors off for me. It would be nice, I think, if everyone learned the basics about hypnosis because we're all in altered states all of the time. Janice's goal is to create harmony between the conscious and subconscious mind. My mentor was teaching me how the subconscious is very much like a lazy fellow lying on the couch, drinking beer. It's much easier for him to say, no, I don't want to change, than yes, I do. So my job is to sell him on the idea of like, oh yeah, just imagine the fun things we can do. <laughs> As children, we are very vulnerable. It doesn't take much to misinterpret our parents' actions. Self-esteem is the most extraordinary thing to describe. So if you take a little baby and that little baby's parents are not feeding it or changing its diaper or coming when it's crying, that's so profound that if that baby believes there's something wrong with those big people, that thought's too scary, that's death. So that little baby will grow up and believe there's something wrong with it. When you're folding over like that, that's the part you're covering up. In my heart, I just want everyone to know how easy it is, right? And especially talking to yourself and talking to a little owie in your body and, and understanding, you know, like when one tooth is hurting, the other 31 are feeling fine. We're only looking at the one that's hurting, but really we're not remembering how amazing we are. Michael, now you can open your eyes and just tell me how you feel. I feel peaceful. I feel really, really grounded and content. But you know how I feel? I just have to tell you. That was easy. I got the easy button. <laughs> I love you were it. a great client. You can come back anytime. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Janice. For Local Connection, I'm Michael Barry Anderson. Happening now in Burnaby at the Japanese Canadian National Museum is Mono Guitari. And our very own Marnie Mains takes a closer look at the exhibit that chronicles the history of Japanese culture in Vancouver. So many of our people that we spoke to today were children before the war. Monogatari is the Japanese word for stories. The exhibit chronicles tales of Powell Street from 1920 to 1942. 
This is an exhibit that looks at the history of Powell Street area in Vancouver from before the war. And this was the height of the life of the Japanese community in that area. And it was a huge neighborhood, both uh, residential and commercial buildings. And this is where almost over 8,000 Japanese Canadians lived in Vancouver. But you can see that this area is just a small part of the long history of Japanese Canadians in the Vancouver area. And then after the war, after 1949, people sort of trickled back a little bit, but never in very large numbers. Powell Street was the pre-war business center of the Japanese community in Vancouver. One of the things all people remember about Powell Street are the many delicious smells of wonderful Japanese foods. Uh, there were many competing confectionaries and different people had their favorites that they went to. There were a number of different tofu shops, there were soy sauce makers, there were tea stores. So Powell Street was a place you could go to get all sorts of special uh, foods that you couldn't find anywhere else in Vancouver. So the Japanese Canadian community loved to celebrate. This display uses historical vignettes. Some of those events were the 1939 royal visit of the king and queen. Audio interviews. I, I think the Fukuoka can, people like to perform. And archival films. We were able to find some audio and video clips of what life was like on Powell Street before the war, and we interspersed that with some of our historic photos. So we have a film in the exhibit that kind of gives you a sense of what uh, the diversity and excitement of being on Powell Street before the war. If you missed the exhibit, you can learn all about it through their book, which is available at the museum. It's that time in the show where we want to find out what makes living on the West Coast so great. Here's what you have to say. Thanks guys, I'm down at Sunset Beach asking people what they love about living on the West Coast. I think it's beautiful. I mean, today the weather's gorgeous and um, you know, here by the water, it is, it's the best of both worlds. You have the city and, and then you have like, this beautiful scenery. It's honestly the, the land of opportunity. Like there's mountains when you look that way and there's ocean when you look that way, it's perfect. Uh, I love everything about the West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> What's not to love about it? I mean, it's gorgeous, right? <laughs> I like how we have amazing summers and then we can still go skiing in the wintertime. I've had opportunities. I've been up skiing. I think, I'll go down and go kayaking. And then I'm usually too tired. But you can. <laughs> we've got everything that, that you want. I mean, we've got the sun. We've got the snow. We've got a little bit of culture. We've got some of the world's best food. All year round, have the beach and uh, she loves this. What do you like best about living in Coquitlam? The people living, like my neighborhoods, like everything is so convenient, everything's so close. What do you like best about living in the West End? I think it's the only neighborhood where you could wear your pajamas or your Prada and fit in. There's definitely a, a relaxed lifestyle here that you can't really get anywhere else. The weather! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful weather. The air, the smell of air is fabulous and the moisture here. In the winter time, it doesn't get too cold, no blizzards or anything. So, yeah. Nice. And what about you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Love happens in Vancouver. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for us down here at Granville Island for Vancouver's Fringe Festival. We welcome your feedback. You can email us or visit our Facebook page. For Local Connection, I'm Marnie Maines. And I'm Clayton Timko. See you next time. <laughs>